Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna. So uh, we're now in Kansas City, yes. Missouri. Pretty sure we're on the Missouri side. Uh, you can watch the uh, <laughs> Bhakti Vision vlog. vlog, Wandering Krishnas, to understand a little bit more. But we're at the Rupanuga Vedic College, and you can see more also on the Bhakti Vision about that. This is Sri Sri Gorni Thai, seems to be the presiding deities here. This is our first time here. Uh, we kind of just walked in. Yeah, we did, like we did in LA Temple. Yeah, and uh, nobody's here, but uh, we're going to do a reading. We'd be quick if you Sh don't know. <laughs> yeah, Srila Prabhupada's here, Gorni Thai's here, so the whole universe is here. So we're reading yeah. from Bhagavatam, where yeah. are we? Canto 3, Chapter 28, Text 32. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Text 32 <coughs> A yogi should similarly meditate on the most benevolent smile of Lord Sri Hari a smile which for all those who bow to him drives away the ocean of tears caused by intense grief. The yogi should also meditate on the Lord's arched eyebrows, which are manifested by his internal potency in order to charm the sex god for the good of the sages. Did we read this? We read this, yeah. All right. I marked it yeah, also. we did, we did. Text 33. Okay. With devotion steeped in love and affection, the yogi should meditate within the core of his heart upon the laughter of Lord Vishnu. Yeah, we read, you see this last oh, time, I didn't read from my book. I see, and I, I messed up because somehow we were both, sh no, we used this, phones. we both read from our phones. phones. Okay, text 34, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> By following this course, the yogi gradually develops pure love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari. In the course of his progress in devotional service, the hairs on his body stand erect for excessive joy and he is constantly bathed in a stream of tears occasioned by intense love. Gradually, even the mind which he used as a means to attract the Lord as one attracts a fish to a book withdraws from material activities. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so this is text 34, 28, 34. 34, yeah. yeah. Okay. Here it is clearly mentioned that meditation, which is an action of the mind, is not the perfect stage of samadhi or absorption. In the beginning, the mind is employed in attracting the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but in the higher stages, there is no question of using the mind. A devotee becomes accustomed to serving the Supreme Lord by purification of his senses. In other words, the yoga principles of meditation are required as long as one is not situated in pure devotional service. The mind is used to purify the senses, but when the senses are purified by meditation, there is no need to sit in a particular place and try to meditate upon the form of the Lord. One becomes so habituated that he automatically engages in the personal service of the Lord. When the mind forcibly is engaged upon the form of the Lord, this is called nirvija yoga or lifeless yoga. For the yogi does not for the yogi does not automatically engage in the personal service of the Lord. But when he is constantly thinking of the Lord, that is called Sabija Yoga or Living Yoga. One has to be promoted to the platform of Living Yoga. Okay, so um, seems like there's a, a specific concept that's being discussed here, first and foremost, based on the principle that um, uh, this idea of being completely absorbed in service to the Lord is not just meditation, but it's meditation taken to the point where one becomes completely absorbed and engages therefore in service and full worship of the Lord. Um, and there's two terms, Nirbija Yoga and Sabija Yoga. Is One is Sabija Yoga is the living yoga and the other is there's meditation but it's not so fully engaged like that. Any other thoughts? Yeah, I like the analogy in the verse that oh, says nice. um, even the mind which can be used, it can be a means to attract the Lord and the analogy as one attracts a fish to a hook. 
Yeah, yeah that's great, huh? They just stuck out Gradually, for me. Even the mind, which he uses as a means to attract the Lord, has one attraction. Yes. So how does that how does that look and sound for you? It just stood out to me. It just because like we're not the mind, and we're mm -hmm. in control of the mind. And like just as someone who's trying to catch a fish is in control of that process by taking some bait, put it on the hook, and I will, you know, this fish which is swimming about, which is in its um, element in the water. I'm mm. not in the element in the water, but you, I can catch it just with a little thing. So in the same way, my mind, which I know, speaking for myself, is here, there, and everywhere, all the time, whatever I'm mm -hmm. doing. But it can, the Lord can be the bait which can just grab it, you know? And for sure, when we walked in here, as we have been doing on our journeys, yeah because we're traveling cross country um it's just i always am so every time we come in i'm just grateful to help because he's done that these are little baits as it were on a hook that he's created to catch the condition living entities like myself because you just walk in and it's like home or wherever you go and yeah. your mind is like yeah this is what this is this i'm peaceful this i feel happy i feel happy peaceful and at home just coming it may be a different country, a different state, you know, but every, you know, Prabhupada's here, the Lordships are here, the temple is more or less, you know, you've got the Vyasa books, signs up with yeah, books. Yeah, it's familiar home. territory. It's home, and Prabhupada's created that mm. date for all of us. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's nice. Gradually, even the mind which he used as a mean, that's the yogi. Right. The yogi was using the mind. Uh, as a means to attract the Lord. So it means we're using our mind by controlling the mind by meditation and you try to attract the Lord as one attracts a fish to a hook mm -hmm. and withdraws from material activity. Anyway, this is very powerful. Very nice. Thank you for bringing that up. Here. One should engage in the service of the Lord 24 hours a day as confirmed in the Brahma Samhita. The stage of Premanjana Charita one, or sorry, can be attained by developing complete love. When one's love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead and devotional service is fully developed, one always sees the Lord, even without artificially meditating on His form. His vision is divine because He has no other engagement. At this stage of spiritual realization, it is not necessary to engage the mind artificially. Since the meditation recommended in the lower stages is a means to come to the platform of devotional service, those already engaged in the transcendental loving and service of the Lord are above such meditation. This stage of perfection is called Krishna consciousness. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so just trying to meditate on some object or understanding or just trying to in one sense I guess you could say just still the mind or calm the mind and that's a lower stage than being completely absorbed in uh, service and when we're engaged in service then we're doing that with some level of love like you just mentioned it kind of seems like someone might be cooking an offering or Someone must, someone's had to print these books, someone distributes the books, someone leads the kirtan, someone serves or works or goes to school and studies, you know, all of these things. So the service can be done for Krishna or when we chant our rounds, uh, when we're hearing now, like we're hearing from Bhagavatam, this is all service, so like that. Mm. Text 35. When the mind is thus completely freed from all material contamination and detached from material objectives, it is just like the flame of a lamp. At that time, the mind is actually dovetailed with that of the Supreme Lord and is experienced as one with Him because it is freed from the interactive flow of the material qualities. In the material world, the activities of the mind are acceptance and rejection. As long as the mind is in material consciousness, it must be forcibly trained to accept meditation on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But when one is actually elevated to loving the Supreme Lord, the mind is automatically absorbed in thought of the Lord. In such a position, a yogi has no other thought than to serve the Lord. This dovetailing of the mind with the desires of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is called Nirvana 
or making the mind one with the Supreme Lord. Mm. Thoughts? Yeah, interesting. The proper, the material world, the activities of the mind are acceptance and rejection. And it's true, isn't it? In relation to our desires and what makes us mm. comfortable and interested, as it were. I like this, I don't like that, this yeah. is good, I don't like yeah. that, he's good. And based on that, we actually lead our lives, we, we choose our association, we choose the foods, so how we eat, what, you know, where the we live. The people we associate with. And it is, it comes down to just that one sentence of accepting and rejecting, but based on what, what feels good for me, you know, you know but, what gratifies our... But what's above that? What's above that is the intelligence, mm -hmm. which would give us clarity above likes and dislikes um, or accept and reject. Um, of course, the mind, if under the control of the intelligence, that potential for acceptance and rejection is also done in accordance with higher knowledge and higher intelligence. This will help me in my Krishna consciousness. I accept it. This will not help me. I reject it. But. Uh, generally people are just it's coming the opposite direction because the senses what gives me pleasure I accept what doesn't give me pleasure I reject like that I'll read the next one the best example of nirvana is cited in Bhagavad Gita in the beginning the mind of Arjuna deviated from Krishna's Krishna wanted Arjuna to fight but Arjuna did not want to so there was disagreement but after hearing Bhagavad Gita from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Arjuna dovetailed his mind with Krishna's desire. This is called oneness. This oneness, however, did not cause Arjuna and Krishna to lose their individualities. Very important point. The Mayavadi philosophers cannot understand this. They think that the oneness necessitates loss of individuality. Actually, however, we find in Bhagavad Gita that individuality is not lost. When the mind is completely purified in love of Godhead, the mind becomes the mind of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Wow, that's very powerful. <laughs> but must be handled with care. <laughs> The mind at that time does not act separately, nor does it act without inspiration to fulfill the desire of the Lord. The individual liberated soul has no other activity. Pratinivritta guna pravaha. In the conditioned state, the mind is always engaged in activity impelled by the three modes of material nature. But in the transcendental stage, the material modes cannot disturb the mind of the devotee. The devotee has no other concern than to satisfy the desires of the Lord. That is the highest stage of perfection called nirvana or nirvana mukti. At this stage, the mind becomes completely free from material desire. I think it's an interesting, I would say a bit of a slant on this idea of nirvana because nirvana is something that generally is understood as the level of perfection for the um, Buddhist and nirvana means no more forest, vana, like Brindavan or Bahulavan, um, Madhuvan. Van means forest and nir means no more forest, means the no more forest and material desires, no more living in the, yeah, in, in, in Maya. And often it's, it's linked with nirvana entering into nothingness or oneness, one or the other. But Srila Prabhupada here is saying that the highest level of nirvana is when one's mind becomes one with the Supreme Lord's mind and then one is acting on the platform of service. So it's very powerful. Okay, final paragraph. Yata che. Ache means flame. When a flame is broken or the oil is finished, we see that the flame of the lamp goes out. But according to scientific understanding, the flame is not extinguished, it is conserved. This is conservation of energy. Similarly, when the mind stops functioning on the material platform, it is conserved in the activities of the Supreme Lord. The Mayavadi philosopher's conception of cessation of the functions of the mind is explained here. Cessation of the mental functions 
means cessation of activities conducted under the influence of the free mode's material nature. What did you get out of that? Um, yeah, I thought it was interesting, like, the example Prabhupada gives that the lamp hasn't died as such, the energy is still there. The potential is still there, yeah. Just like if you get rub two sticks together and you can make a fire mm. because the energy is there. So in the same way, my understanding in reading this is that the mind, it says, stops functioning on the material platform when it becomes absorbed or consumed, as it were, in the activities and thoughts of the Lord. It doesn't mean we become one with the Lord, mm. but it means we're choosing to dovetail our mental activity yeah mental focus activity. which on a basic level even like if you're in a relationship or this you do that when you, when you someone you like and then oh they like so your friends might say well since when did you start eating that or since when did you start combing your hair like that oh yeah because you know you think it's so instant. yeah i do because you can't like not giving up your identity, but your other per the other person you're maybe with eats, you know, like that, or those things, or does those things, or has their hair like that. So it's, it's the same thing, it's on that level, just to explain it, basic level, because it's a big thing, as Prabhupada explains, my value, yeah, we become one. Mm. But you become one in interest. Mm, you don't become nice. one in person, because you can't, because yeah. as it's explained, we're so tiny. How do you become, how does the tiny become one with the big? Yeah, but yeah. my interest can become one. Hmm. Yeah, our interests. And then the focus of that interest, devotional service, means we're fully engaged in oneness. So that's nice. Right. Wonderful. Okay, so I think we're going to stop here. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. To Danavir, His Holiness Danavir Goswami Maharaj, a life of dedicated service to Srila Prabhupada, uh, establishing this Rupanuga Veda College here in Kansas City. And um, he really initiated, he also served in London for many years. He was instrumental in setting up the Bhakta program. Uh, some of you may remember he came to some of our volunteers dinners, at least one or two, I think one. And then he was there for Harry Noms and different events that we had. Um, yeah, lifelong uh, sannyasi brahmachari. And uh, yeah, amazing individual and personality. So thank you for making, mm -hmm. fulfilling Srila Prabhupada's mission and establishing mm -hmm. this Rupanuga Veda College and uh, allowing us to come and read yeah. Srila Prabhupada's books with Sri Sri Gorni Thai yes. on our travels. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Grantarai Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.